Hey guys, so I have been trying to do some research in terms of gauge charging as well as speed because we do know that speed somewhat affects gauge charging but to what extent? Um, nobody actually have any exact figure on that. In fact, just to um, as a disclaimer here is I've done all the research that I can but I could not come up with like a proper formula or I, I didn't try to come up with the proper formula on how to actually calculate it um, but there are some interesting finding or at least I think it's interesting and can be helpful especially if you want to outcharge the enemy's gauge you know in situation where you do not have a FR to actually cancel the enemy's FR right so in this first part of the video i have core rex and Aerith. so uh if you look into what i have now core is doing the final turn because the turn start with rex Aerith, and core so now coming back to rex turn you can see there is the boost in uh the gauge bonus right it was initially at 25.5 percent then we have a boost of 13.9% all the way to 39.4%. Okay, so I call this the bonus for completing a turn cycle. Um, like, yeah, Rex, Aerith, Core, back to Rex. So it's a cycle, okay? So every time we complete a cycle, most of the time, we will get a boost of HP damage, uh, sorry, of the gauge charging. And first off, um, I'm remo removing all the speed from my characters. Basically to show the comparison, if I have speed and have speed passive remove, and that, how does that actually affects the gauge charging. So I'm speeding up part of this video, um, basically because it will be a replication on the earlier part. So the indication here is that when I reach Core's turn, and then back to Rex turn, completing the cycle, I will get the bonus, but now with speed passive remove, I actually get more bonus than I should. Right? So just give a moment for Core to do whatever that he needs to do. And the bonus that I get is 20.8% compared to when my speed passive is on. There's 13.8%. 9% so here you can see we are at 47.9 so the, but the thing is that we do not have the specific numbers like how much does core have what like the speed of core the speed of Aerith or the speed of Rex we do not have that exact number so I couldn't formulate out like what is affecting 13.9% bonus or 20.8% bonus but the thing is that we do know it does affect the bonus and different character has different speed passive. Some have one, some even have none, some have three, some have two. So it all affects how the gauge charge bonus is actually calculated. Another thing to um, look out for, actually you can go back to the previous part of this video, is on the enemy's bonus. So I do notice that the enemy's bonus is always lower than our own bonus. So like we get 13.9, the enemy actually got 8.5%. And when we got 20.8%, the enemy got 12.7%. The reason is because we have higher gauge uh, charging due to FE boards. If I'm not mistaken, up to 45% more, more, right? Because we have three passive each time is 15%. Uh, okay, so roughly about that. So we will always get more. So if you enter summon and getting all the bonus because during summon enemies gauge is frozen, then you can outcharge them more than you should if you do it correctly. Later part of the video, I will show that again. But now for this part, I am testing on Edgar's high, um, high turn rate skills, right? Because crossbow is high turn rate, drill is high turn rate. So I kind of want to know what happened to the HP damage bone of uh, the gauge charging bonus when I jump turn because now I kind of like prematurely create completed the cycle 
right? Like before Rex get a turn, now Edgar get a turn, like I kind of like completed the cycle. So I should get uh, the bonus early. So in fact, it actually does. If you look over through this video, in fact, we actually does get the bonus early, but we don't get all the way up to that 13.9% as from the previous part of this video, we get maybe something like 11.9%. Then I noticed that now er while everyone is taking a turn, we kind of get a small bonus each time. So we notice you can notice that when your character, like after Aerith get a turn, the gauge charge, it increases a little, that is due to Aerith's turn, then it increases a bit more. So it's like there is two time when the gauge actually increases. So the second time it does, that is where we get the bonus. And with Edgar in, he kind of mess up the entire turn order. So we get the bonus like after the first time, then every turn we get a little bit of the bonus. 1.7, 1.2, 0.5, 0.5. You know, get all these small little bonus in between. But when you complete a full cycle again, then you get a huge bonus at the end of it. Okay, so a uh, high turn rate does affect the timing when we will retrieve the bonus. So again, why is this important? Because if you know you are going to get a huge boost of the bonus and then you jump into summon, that enemy is not going to get the bonus. You are. So you can go, you, are, you will be able to get a hit of the enemy's gauge by 10 to 20% just due to that bonus. Not including, you know, all the turns that you will be taking in the summon that further boost the gauge. Okay, so this is one important message. Okay, now for the next part of the video. I will be showing the impact of high turn rate and low turn rate directly in the summon phase. So we don't see what is happening to the enemy and then we can compare directly like if we use a high turn rate scale versus a low turn rate scale in the summon at the end of the day, how much total um, force gauge charge do we get? So now I have Squall instead of Edgar and earlier Core. Uh, why Squall? Because Squall has to have high turn rate. S1 also has pretty high turn rate, but not as high as S2. So I'm comparing directly what happened if I just use S1 or S2 in summon and how does that affect the gauge. So here I started off with 20.7% when I enter um, the summon. Okay, And after a return, we get a boost of 8.8%. Uh, so we get 31.4 and then now Squall uses S2 and his turn jumps. Okay, so we get 1.9% and then another boost which is 8.8%. Then as usual, uh, we get the normal turn which is 1.9%. Okay, so 4.21, then 1.9 and that will give us somewhere between 4, yeah, 44%. Then now here we also get some form of a boost, a bonus, so I do not know why that bonus comes, which is why I say high turn rate does affect the timing on when we get the bonus. So it's like um, because of Squall having a premature turn, then we get a bonus after that because it's not accounted earlier. So overall here it's now at 56.5. So after the summon phase, I'm at 67.2%. Okay, so from 20.7 to 67.2%. So here again, I'm going to repeat the fight, but this time I'm going to do just use S1. So for S1, I enter the summon at 23%, but let's just let the video fast forward um, until the summon phase, but pretty much, you know, throughout this part of the video, um, I'm getting the same percentage for both. Okay, so 23, enter summon. Right, so the next turn, I'll be completing the cycle, and I should be getting my bonus. Alright, here 24.9, then I get my bonus, up all the way to... 
Okay, so that's 12.7%. It is more than when I use S2, which is 8.8%. Okay, so here again, um, I get another bonus. I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure why I'm getting a bonus here. But basically, it is way more than what I have been getting if I use S2. So this does show that overall, um, using a skill that has lower turn rate does affects the um, value or basically the percentage of gauge charging bonus that we receive um, and hence you know if you are in summon try to use skills that has low turn rate because it will generally give you a much much higher boost than if you otherwise don't so here at the end of the summon phase now is at 17.6 so I'll be exiting, exiting the summon phase with about 72.5%. And previously, if I use S2, I exit with 67.2%. So that's difference about 5% gauge charging. So the same thing here, instead of Squall, I have Anna Crow because she does have low turn rate. But for this first part of the test, I'm using her S1, which I believe it's normal turn rate, so not fast, not slow, and we can see that um, the total percentage that she gets. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, I enter this summon at about 18.4 or 20.3 percent, and the bonus here just now was 20.3 percent because I do believe uh, Anna is overall slower than Squall, so uh, this team setup does result in higher. Um, force gauge bonus that we receive. Okay, so now it's at 47.3. So after every turn, it increases to 66.5 because it's back to Anna's turn, completing a turn cycle, and that is a total of 17.3. But I should be getting about 20, which is why now I kind of like get the additional 5% that was not given earlier. And here I exit the summon phase with 76.1%. But let's just continue on and see when coming back to Anna's turn, what is the current gauge like? Okay, so I'm at 80.9, it goes up to 83.7. So now we have a boost because back to Anna's turn and it's now at 96.1%. And the enemy is at 47.2%. So I want you to remember this number because I will directly compare it with the next part of this video. And now in this part, uh, I'm looking at Anna. So Anna used LD instead of S2, so she's several turn behind. And I want you to pay attention on the percentage right now. It is 18.4, that is the same as the one for the previous uh, clip. Then here we have Aerith and yeah, and back to Rex, because now Anna's turn is far behind, so again, it's kind of like I triggered the bonus earlier, and here we have 43.5% because of the low turn rate. Previously, the other clip, if you can reverse back, the bonus that we get is 20.3%, but here we get 23.2%, so we get about 3% more due to low turn rate skills, okay? So this does indicate on the impact of low turn rate skills. But let us look what happened at the end of the summon phase because I would at least expect that I get more um, for skate charging because I use the low turn rate skill. In the previous video with Anna, we get 76.1. And now it's the final turn and we are at 74.3. And after Aerith, we leave summon at 76.2%. So it's just slightly better, but here, here's the thing, okay? In the previous part, we let Anna to receive her turn. So during her turn, she gets um, 90, about 94%, but enemy's gauge was way higher than 40. It's like 46 or 47. So overall, it is still better if you enter um, like if you use a low turn rate skill, then you enter the summon and harness the bonus that you get for force gate charging so that you can get ahead of the enemy. 
And in this last part of the video is where I will demonstrate um, what happens if I complete the cycle then enter the summon or if I do not complete the cycle like knowing that the next turn will complete the cycle and receive the bonus but I enter summon to prevent the enemy from getting that. So the result is actually very obvious that um, I will definitely go way ahead than the enemy's gauge by doing so. So same thing here, um, Rex, Aerith, Squall. Okay, so now the summon is summon gauge is charged, and I use Quistis to delay because I do not want the enemy to take a turn to interrupt the bonus or the gauge charging. Okay, so now back to Squall's turn, I get the bonus. Then I enter summon. So I'm just gonna do whatever I normally do. Uh, I'm trying not to use a uh, heightened rate skill here because I do not want to interrupt the readings or the calculation, you know. Because it's really kind of messy if we start using heightened rate. Right, so you can continue on watching this part. Now we are at 57.3. Squall has double turn because I did not remove Squall speed passive. If I remove Squall speed passive, he is super slow. So, it wasn't a good example, so I did not remove his speed passive. And here, after Rex, I leave the summon at 80.1%. Okay, an enemy is at 52.2%. And now 66.9, and then 94.2. So, I'm going to repeat this fight. Now, is that I will enter summon earlier before the enemy... Uh, before Squall get his turn back. Okay, so same thing. Reigns. Right, basically I use that to charge. Um, I do understand that in a lot of fights, we are kind of like, we'll use the summon in order to deal a very big, huge chunk of damage when our forgage is 999%. But... Most of the time, actually, if you notice, our the damage that we deal is pretty much overkill. So you can kill the enemy even if you do not use a summon. So the concern here is now for gauge charging. If really summon is not a concern to you in terms of killing the enemy, why not use it for gauge charging? Okay, so here I enter the summon at 20.4. So this is where I get the bonus. Okay, so now it's at 37% and enemy is still at 36 Previously, they are already at over 50%. Okay, they are already over at 50%. So now, just let, let it run. Okay, now 73.9% and then I exceed the summon at 77.7, enemies at 38.4. But previously, we did manage to get 94 point some, over 94%. So let me try to reach 94% as well in this um, simulation. Okay, 83. So now we are at 97 and enemy is still at 61.8%. So this might not seem much compared to the previous one but do note that you know every time i take a turn enemy is going to charge their gauge by six to seven percent while i'm only able to charge it at about two to two point three percent okay so from seven nine point nine percent i probably need one more turn and enemy will end uh means i can enter my fr phase while enemies is at maybe 70 percent at most 67 or 68 percent while on the other case where I was at about 94%, I probably need another two or three more turn to hit 100%. But enemy who is at 66, they probably come very close to 100 as well. Because every time is 7%, three turns as 21. So 66 plus 21, that's close to 90%. Okay, so this means that it does really matter when you enter your summon in order to get a huge huge boost or uh, out 
charging the boss in terms of FR gauge. So here are just some take home message basically from all these tests. We do know that speed affects the value of bonus we receive and the bonus is usually received after all three party members take a turn and we do know a high or low turn rate also affects the value of bonus we receive but it also mess up the order and when we receive the bonus then the best to utilize this information is to harness the bonus while we are in summon phase to get ahead of boss's gauge so we use low turn rate outside of summon and then get this bonus inside the summon like what i did with anna crow last uh, with FE30, we kind of get like 45% more uh, gauge charging compared to the boss. So when we get the bonus, we usually get a higher chunk of bonus compared to what the boss receives. Okay? So overall with this information, um, if you are looking into runs, especially like the one done by myself, sometime Theologica, um, we do get the gauge charged as fast as possible so we can enter the summon we can then we enter BT phase basically to outcharge the enemy, then we enter our FR and kill the enemy within one FR. So I hope you like this video. I know it's a bit long and with all the numbers and the video uh, fast forwarding itself and stuff like that, it can be a little bit hard to follow. But I try to put as much number as I can in the description of the video. So if you want to read up more about it on what is the exact um, gauge charging speed and everything like that then do